Momentum and collision. One of the reasons that momentum, Newton's quantity of motion, is important is that experiments show that when several objects collide, the total momentum of the system is conserved in the collision. This leads to a fundamental law of mechanics that can be used in problem solving. The total momentum after the collision is equal to the total momentum before the collision. So this, in algebraic terms, is m1 v1 plus m2 v2 equals m1 u1 plus m2 u2. And that equation is really, really important. They often ask you in the exam to use that equation to find either a missing speed or velocity or to find a missing mass. Now you must identify with any moments question which direction you're going to take posit as positive for the speeds so you don't make any mistakes. Okay, So we're going to remember them bits for when we're answering the following question. It says a particle P of mass 2 kilograms is moving with speed 3 metres per second to the minus 1 on a smooth horizontal plane. Particle Q of mass 3 kilograms is at rest on the plane. Particle P collides with particle Q and after the collision Q moves off with a speed of 2 and a third metres per second to the minus 1. Find the speed and direction of motion of P after the collision. Now, you need to go through and highlight the key points in this question. So 2, 3 metres per second to the minus 1, the 3 kilograms for Q, it's at rest, and you need to highlight the speed afterwards, which is 2 and a third metres per second to the minus 1. Now you can use that information to draw a diagram to represent this question. So, here's my particle P. And here's my particle Q. Let's just look at the information we know about particle P first. Well, we know its mass is 2 kilograms. And we know its initial speed is 3 metres per second to the minus 1. Now, we do not know its speed afterwards, because that's what we're asked to find in part A. So, x, ms to the minus 1. Particle Q, let's write down what we know about that. Well, its initial mass is 3 kilograms, its initial speed is 0, and its velocity at the end is 2 and a third metres per second to the minus 1. Now, we can move on to answering the question, which is to find the speed of P after the collision. Now, as I said earlier on, we need to identify which direction we're going to take as positive. So I'm going to take this direction as the positive direction. So any speeds in that direction will take as positive, any in the other direction as negative. Right, firstly, write down the equation we have written down earlier on. The M1, V1, plus M2, v2 is equal to m1 u1 plus m2 u2. So, the final velocity of p, which we're going to use p as being 1 and q as being 2. So, m, well the mass is 2 and its final velocity is what we don't know, so that's x. And if we look at number 2, well, its mass is 3 and its final velocity is 2 and a third. Now, if we look at the other side of the equation, so m1 is 2 and its initial speed is 3. And we're told that m2 initially has a speed of 0, so it's 3 times 0. Let's tidy up that line now. And let's get rid of things we can get rid of. So 2x plus um, 7 is equal to 6. Now 3 times 0 is 0, so I'm not going to write that down. So 2x is equal to minus 1 by subtracting 7 
So x is equal to minus a half ms to the minus 1. But what does this minus speed mean? Well, it means that the direction of the speed is reverse. So you need to write down to the examiner that the direction of P has reversed and its new speed is a half. Right, that's part A completed. Now let's look at part B. So part B, we're asked to find out what the impulse is of P receives from Q. So, let's just draw a diagram now, just looking at P. <coughs> Sorry about that. There's P, and we know its mass is 2, its initial speed is 3, and its final speed in the opposite direction is a half ms to the minus 1, and its impulse. Right, and remember from the last video that impulse is equal to mv minus mu, so the momentum after take away the momentum before. Now, if we take positive as being in this direction, so it's going to be 2 times a half minus 2 times minus 3. So that's 1 minus minus 6, which is 7 newton seconds. Now if you take an impulse in the other direction, you've ended up with minus 7 newton seconds.